Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting the Hunter Mobs from Bloodborne the Board Game by Seamon Games. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to the fourth episode in this Bloodborne painting series and today we're painting the Hunter Mobs. These are one of the enemy types that you'll face in this adventure and exploration game by Simon Games. So just like with the Scourge Beast and the Huntsman's Minions, the minis that I've already painted in this series, there are four identical sculpts of the Hunter Mobs. But unlike the way that I painted the Scourge Beast and Huntsman's Minions, I'm not going to be varying the colours that I use from one sculpt to another. The way that I paint each individual person within an individual sculpt will vary so that there's a bit of colour variation out on the table. But the way that I paint these three in this sculpt will be exactly the same as the way that I paint the three in the other sculpts. So in this video, I'm only going to show you how I paint this hunter mob, but everything that you see me do to this one, I did in the exact same way to the other three. So the main reason why I kept the base coating simple by painting each sculpt the same is just time. Because the more that you vary the colours that you use from one sculpt to another, the longer it's going to take. So I just chose a very few simple colours that would work well together. So a couple of different shades of brown and a dark grey. And then I just painted each of the three individuals in a sculpt just in a different combination of those colours. So I use the dark grey for the pants on one and then dark grey for the jacket on another and then the dark brown here you can see for the boots on one and then the jacket on another and so I just did combinations like that just to make sure that no single mini had the same colour on the top and on the bottom. But the other reason though why I decided to keep that base coating really really simple and not spend too much time on it is because as you can see here from this photo I did a test of the OSL from the flaming torches before starting to base coat just to see how it was going to look and how much of the mini it was going to end up covering up. And as you can see, it covers a fair bit of it. And so I figured, well, there's not really too much point in spending a whole lot of time on the base coating if I'm then just going to mostly cover it up when I do the OSL. So yeah, just to keep the time down, and as you saw from the photo, most of the paint was going to get covered up anyway, I just decided to keep the base coating really, really simple. And also, by keeping the time down here, it meant that I could focus most of my time on the OSL from those flaming torches, which is definitely the main element of the Hunter Mobs. So now that I've explained what I need to about the base coating, we're just going to speed things up a little bit until all of the colours are blocked in.
All right, so just for the next part here, I'm going to be adding black into each of the original base coat colors to be painting the back of each of the three minis and then feathering out the edges so that they blend back into the original base coat colors on the front side. And the reason that I'm doing this is to put the back of each of the minis in a really, really dark shadow so that when the OSL gets done a little bit later, the front side will be quite light where it's being hit by the light from those flaming torches, but then it will transition to a really, really dark shadow on the back of each mini. And this will give the impression that these guys are walking at nighttime so that their front side is lit up with the torches, but the back side is just going to be in really, really dark shadow because of the nighttime. And that will really increase the contrast between the OSL on the front and the shadows on the back, which will really help to bring out the brightness of the light coming off of those flaming torches. So really all I'm doing here is just blocking in these colors on the back anywhere that I think the light from the torch won't be reaching. So obviously the backs of the legs and their backs and the underside of their arms. So just any of those areas that I think will be in shadow from the light being cast from the torches. So in parts I just kind of eyeballed from the direction of the flaming torch, just anywhere that I think wouldn't get hit by light. And then, yeah, as you can see here, I'm just blocking those colors in and then just cleaning off the bristles and then just feathering out the edge towards the direction of the areas that's going to be in light, just so that I try and get at least semi-reasonable blends from the shadow through to uh, the parts that aren't going to be in shadow. I didn't worry if the blends weren't absolutely perfect, considering that those blends will mostly be covered by the OSL. But like I said earlier, the main point of this is just so that when you look at the back of the mini, it looks as though it's in deep shadow because it's nighttime, and then you just get that nice shift round to the front where it's going to be much, much brighter because it's lit by the light coming from those torches. All right, so now we're gonna be starting to get into the OSL, but just to give you a bit of an idea of the range of colors that I'm going to be using, here are the five. So I'll be starting off with a dark red, just to lay down where the outer glow is sort of going to be. And then we'll move into a deep orange and then a brighter orange, then into yellows and then finishing off by mixing in just a little bit of white. And the brighter colors will start to get mixed in more and more as I get closer and closer to the light light source, which are those flaming torches. So I'm starting here with Carnage Red, which is one of my deeper reds. And this is just being laid down anywhere that I think any amount of light would be hitting. And then as I start to mix in some of those oranges that I showed in the photo before, and it gradually becomes lighter and lighter, I'll reduce the amount of surface area that I cover so that as I start building up more layers, the outer parts of this red will be left showing, which will just create that real soft outer glow at the edge of the distance that the light will be reaching. So like I mentioned earlier, there are four identical sculpts of the Hunter mobs, and for each step involved, this one here that's in the video is the last of the four that I did. So I've already done the OSL, or at least for the most part, on the other three. So I've kind of had a little bit of a practice and worked out a few things that I need to change to improve the overall look. And one of the things that I noted was that I covered too much area with the OSL and it just looked as though too much of them was being hit by light. Whereas in reality, these torches aren't going to be that bright and aren't going to be casting light over that greater distance. So one thing I was really, really conscious of when I was laying down that carnage red was that I really reduced the amount of area that I covered with that, which then forced me to cover smaller areas with the oranges and the yellows. And that really helped because it really added to the impression that what I'm painting here is the glow coming from these torches because I was really able to concentrate the painting more around where the torches are as opposed to spreading that glow too far. 
And the other thing that I did differently with this one compared to the others is that I built the effect up over fewer layers, which meant that I made greater jumps from, say, the oranges into the yellows. Because the mistake that I made with the first ones is that I tried to build it up too gradually, which meant that I had to really cover bigger areas with the earlier layers, if that meant that I could then make all of those subtle changes from one layer to the next to then finish with the yellow immediately around the torches. But by making bigger jumps and adding more orange or more yellows earlier on, it really forced me to cover smaller areas because I needed to leave some of that previous layer showing, and that really helped to build that nice concentration to glow right around the torches because I was able to leave some of the red and then the oranges and then into the yellows because I was building it up over fewer layers. So that's definitely some lessons that I learned when doing the OSL here in that I needed to cover less area initially and then make greater jumps as I was adding in more colors just so that it really helped to have that soft glow around the edge without covering too much area and then really concentrate that glow right around where the torch is. And what I found with these is that I think it's probably more more difficult to do OSL on smaller minis rather than larger minis because you have such a short distance to work with to go from that outer glow where that red is still showing through to that really, really bright glow around that torch. Ideally, you would have a larger area to do those blends from one color to another with and get that real nice subtle shift from one color to another, but here very, very short distances to work with. And here's just a bit of a comparison between the one that I did just then, which is on the left, and one of the earlier ones that I did, which is on the right. And it's always subjective with something like this as to which one looks best. But I think the one on the left looks better because I was able to reduce a bit the amount of area that the OSL covered, so the amount of glow just looked a little bit more realistic. And also because I worked from that initial red through to the brightest yellow with the white mixed in over fewer layers, it really brought out that look more that the surfaces that are closer to the flaming torches, like on top of their hands and the peaks of their hats, are being hit by more concentrated light than those surfaces that are further away. Because the orange and the yellow didn't cover as much surface area. So those would definitely be those main things that I learned from doing the OSL with these guys, is don't cover as much surface surface area as what you might initially think that you need to and don't try to be too subtle when shifting from one color to another make bigger jumps than what you think you might initially need to because that will help you cover less surface area and really help build that concentrated glow right around the light source which is really what helps to sell the effect that that light source is actually glowing and giving off light and casting it across those surfaces which is what OSL or object source lighting is all about. And now I'm starting to paint the actual flames on these torches that are giving off the light that's being cast across the hunter mobs. And I just started by repainting them with candlelight yellow, which is one of my brighter yellows, just to give it a nice bright base. And now I've swapped to explosion orange, just one of my brighter oranges. And what I'm doing here is finding in the sculpt each individual flame and then covering about 50% or so of each flame with the orange starting at the tip and then cleaning off the bristles and then feathering that edge out so that each individual flame is orange at its tip and then it gradually blends into that yellow closer to where the torch is where the light is going to be at its hottest. And then now that I've finished here with the oranges, I'm going to shift to red. And then this will then be painted at, again, the tip of each flame, but will only cover about 50% or so of the orange. And then the same thing, once I've just blocked in where I want it to be red, clean off the bristles and then just feather out the edge so that it then starts with red at the tip blends to orange more in the middle and then finishes with that brighter yellow where the flame is going to be at its hottest. But I think what I found to be the most useful way to get that proper flaming fire look is to treat each individually sculpted flame 
as its own flame. Because what that meant is that I just had this really small part that I was concentrating on, getting that red at the tip, then the orange in the middle, and then the yellow at the base, as opposed to trying to work with the entire flame in one go, and getting that red at the tip, orange in the middle, and yellow at the base. Because in reality, with fires, you have hotter and colder spots throughout the fire, depending on where the flames are and the lengths of them. And so by really just concentrating on each individual flame, like you can see this point in the middle there, just that very, very small flame that I was working on there, you do get those hotter and colder looking spots, which does replicate more the way that fire does actually act. And then just to finish off each individual flame and really boost that contrast between the hottest yellow part of the flame and just these cooler tips, I'm just putting down a little bit of black. But this is just exactly the same process as with the orange and the red. Just a little bit on the tip of each individual flame, regardless of where it is in the overall fire. And then just feathering out the edge, so cleaning off the bristles, feathering out the edge so that there's a nice subtle blend from the black through to the red, through to the orange, and then back through to the yellow, just to make it look as though the fire is at its hottest right on top of the torch, and then each individual flame cools off as it gets further away. And lastly, just to create some hot spots within the fire, I'm just putting a very, very small amount of white down at the base of each individual flame and then just feathering it out. So this is just to help build that effect that the fire is at its hottest right in the middle and that these flames that are just heading straight out to the side are still carrying a lot of that heat as opposed to the flames that are arcing up sort of over the top. But it also just adds to that overall contrast because now we have that bright white where the flames are at their hottest through to the yellow, the orange, the red, and then the black where they're at their coolest. And so now with just a black base to go to really bring out the colors of the OSL, the Hunter mobs are finished. I am really, really happy with how these came up, especially considering that this is really only my second go at OSL. Really, really happy with how it looks, especially the way that I was able to give that impression that the most concentrated light is immediately around those light sources. And my favorite angle to look at these guys from, which you'll see here, is as you look from behind and then gradually turn them away, it looks as though they're coming out of that dark shadow from the nighttime behind into that brighter oranges and yellows in the front, which are coming from the light source. But that's going to do us for today. So this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.